We like to have fun here. The Shroom can't prove that. He can't prove that we do, in fact, like to have fun here. I think this is the fastest way to get to Cygnus. Cygnus is down in Boreal's lab, but I don't think there's a, a wave hole in the lab. We have to go all the way around, I think. Which is fine, because we got to walk over to this guy and buy... I'm going to buy a few more cloakers, and honestly, I'll probably buy one or two more search eyes just to be safe. No, nah, I shouldn't buy more, uh, more search eyes. I think we're good on search eyes. Yeah, Harp Note SP, like, you might be thinking, like, man, that's only 10 more damage. Is it really even that worth getting, like, the, the SP over the EX or normal? It definitely is, because if you get the 5 hit, that's not just plus 10 damage, it's plus 50 damage. Even if you get the side hit, it's plus 30 more damage, and it still does the stun effect, so... S SP uh, Harp Note Chip is very worth it. Hey, Thunderball. Give me. I am going to buy a few more cloakers just to be safe. We ran into Libra and Harp Note really fast, but it did take a while to run into uh, Taurus Fire. Do I really think I'm going to need more than 50 of these? No, not really, but like, they cost 500 bucks. I don't think I'm going to need 18 Search Eyes either. So glad we got that SP chip off of, uh... Oh, this is it. Cygnus spawns here. We got the SP chip off of, uh, Cancer Bubble at the start of stream. Because I know I fought him, like, ten times last stream and wasn't able to pull it off. Oh, Pat's here! I didn't know Pat was here. I'm gonna be honest, I was kind of really hoping that we would just instantly get, uh... We would just instantly get the, um, the SP fight here like we did with Harp Note and Libra. Oh, these guys float off the air. Very rude. Where is the bird? What's going on in Pat's Transer? I'm Pat Spriggs. Thank you for visiting my Transer. Yo, this is really neat. Pat has the three Gemini cards as his favorites, but those other three things that are his favorites are the match-only cards that you can only use when you fight, like, real people online. Sometimes memories from the past come flooding back to me all at once. That kid looks troubled. Do you want to help him? Yeah, I want to help Pat. Let's get on it. I better write myself a memo mail. Aw, oh, cool. We can go help Pat with something. So there's like a little Pat side quest you can do. I don't think you can get Pat as a brother, though. I'm pretty sure you can only get Zack as a brother in the post game. I meant to look at my mail. Sometimes the mirrors in the past come flooding back to me all at once. All right, yeah, we can... Uh, yeah, I didn't know there was a little side quest we could do for Pat. I totally want to do that. I didn't think there would be because I know we checked Sonya's transer because I was wondering if she had a side quest for us, and she didn't. Because I know in Star Force 3, and maybe also in Star Force 2, but for sure in Star Force 3, you can get... Uh... This is a not-so-good chip setup. Anyways, words, what was I saying? You can get to a side quest for all of the main characters in Star Force 3 at the very end of the game, or the post-game. Uh, okay, I guess you were slightly too much in the air that that counted as, uh, iframes for you. That's cool. Congrats on your iframes. You're dead now. So anyways, because Sonya didn't have one, I didn't think that Pat would have one, but it looks like he does, so... We will definitely do that. That's that's something I kind of ignored in this playthrough was little side quest things, and, you know, I'm pretty sure usually they're just like, person says I'm having problem, and then they're like, oh, problem can be solved by fighting this enemy or bringing this item, and then you do it and it's done. So I didn't really bother with them, but, you know, I'd like to do this one for Pat, because, you know, Pat's like a main character. Not really a main character, because he doesn't come back up in Star Force 2 and 3. He shows up in 2 on a side quest thing, but... I don't think he shows up in three at all, but you know what I mean. Oh, Cygnus? It's not Cygnus. It's a bunch of bubbles. Ba -na 
bam, bam, bam. I have a head scratcher for you. If you put the Dragon Balls in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber and wait a day outside, would you be able to make a wish? I don't know. The Dragon Balls probably only work on, like, Earth time. I doubt they would work, like... I don't know, because Hyperbolic Time Chamber, like, speeds up time or something, but... I mean, the Namekian Dragon Balls still worked after one Namekian year, even though they were on Earth, but Earth also doesn't, like, being on Earth doesn't, like, accelerate time. I don't know. You know what? Even if you could do that to make another wish, it'd probably be a bad idea, because, like, if you summon Shenron in the hyperbolic... Because, like, how the way that would have to work is you... After you make the wish, the Dragon Balls turn to stone and scatter to the winds. And I'm pretty sure when they're turned to stone, the dragon radar, like, doesn't work. So, like, you can't find them. So, you would have to make the wish with Shenron inside of the hyperbolic time chamber. But then the dragon balls would scatter inside the hyperbolic time chamber. And the hyperbolic time chamber is, like, an infinite mass or whatever. Like, it goes on forever. So, you'd probably run the risk of, like, the dragon balls being lost for all time. Which sounds like a really bad idea. Also, the Dragon Ball cast, from what I can remember, very rarely, if ever, ran into trouble with being like, oh no, we needed to be able to make another wish again immediately. Usually, waiting a year didn't cause them any trouble. Alright, much like Taurus, I can tell that Cygnus is going to be a bit of a nerd. He is not spawning, and that's very rude of him. Shroom, get Cygnus to spawn. They could just catch the stonified Dragon Balls like Goku did that one time. Did Goku do that once? I don't ever remember Goku doing that. Was it an OG Dragon Ball, not in uh, Z? That seems a bit like cheating. But then again, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I like Dragon Ball Z. I really do. And I, I like Dragon Ball as well. I like Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Do not like Dragon Ball Super before anyone asks. But uh, I like them. They're good shows. But, like, I, I never look to Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z as being, like, heavy plot or, like, following the laws of their own universe very much, to be honest, all that often. Like, not like they constantly ignore how their worlds work or anything, although Super definitely ignored how the stuff worked a lot of the time, like the Pretoria earrings. But, like, you know, Dragon Ball will just do whatever Dragon Ball needs to, basically. Like, if they needed to do that to get multiple wishes for to be able to, like, proceed the story or whatever, however they wanted to, then, then they'd do it. Dragon Ball, in my experience, has never really been strict about stuff like that. Like, you know, they made the rule, like, you can only wish someone back once, but then immediately they were, like, as soon as they were like, hey, we need to wish someone back a second time, like, back to life a second time, they were like, oh, don't worry, we'll find some workarounds. Like, we'll find loop, like, they came up with loopholes, like, oh, actually, you can use the Namekian Dragon Balls and you can bring them back an extra time, or uh, if you wish in a certain way, it'll bring him back to life, etc, etc. In regular Dragon Ball, he jumped up and grabbed the four-star ball before it flew away. It's been a long time since I watched OG Dragon Ball, so I just don't remember that, but I believe you. That sounds like something Goku would do. Alright, so as, as we can see here, Cygnus is going to give us some trouble. I can't really be that upset that it's taking a while to find Cygnus, though, when I ran into Harp Note SP literally the first fight in the area, and then I ran into Libra Scales SP like the second fight or something in his area. Like, they popped up so fast. So, taking a little while for Cygnus, I, I will live. I really hate this enemy setup, by the way. That went way faster than I thought it would. Dende literally modifies the Earth Dragon Balls to just make wishes more, more for convenience. Yeah. And I don't think that's really necessarily a bad thing, because, like, I don't know. I Other people feel differently, I'm sure, but for me, Dragon Ball? Dragon Ball was never a super serious anime where it's just like, oh, they better not, like... There better not be any plot holes, or they better not, like, uh, you know, 
go against anything they set up before or like change stuff up or anything like that, you know? I'm like, Dragon Ball I mostly fight because I really like, I really like a couple of the characters like Vegeta, Piccolo, and Gohan are like stellar characters. And then I just like the action. I don't need it to be super in-depth or like strict in its laws and all that. That being said, I do still really hate that they like changed the Pretoria earrings entirely just to fan service bring back Vegito and Super. That was dumb. But most other stuff, I'm just like, yeah, whatever, dude, it's Dragon Ball. Where is Cygnus? I know he spawns here. Where is he? After watching this, I wish Nintendo does a remake of this style of Mega Man game for the Switch instead of the classic style they do. Well, that's not Nintendo. Um. Sorry, just a second. What is this? What am I looking at here? I just got a message I need to look at. Okay, it's not important. Sorry about that. I got a message from my sister, and she just, uh, she went down to Florida on a trip literally, like, yesterday, so I was like, oh no, is this, like, is something wrong? Please go away, bouncy boy. Uh, N Nintendo doesn't make, uh, the Mega Man games, they just usually end up on Nintendo consoles. It's, uh, Mega Man is a Capcom property. So it's not Nintendo. If there was ever a remake of Star Force or Battle Network or anything, like, that that wouldn't be done by Nintendo. That would need to be done by Capcom. I would love it if Capcom brought back Battle Network or Star Force. Because, uh, they brought back, uh... They brought back, um... Wow, I got two counters there. That would have been amazing if it was a boss fight. They brought back, like, they did Mega Man 11 or whatever, so I'd, I'd love to see Battle Network or Star Force make a return. I know that there had always been plans to make a Star Force 4, but then the franchise wasn't selling well enough, so they didn't do it. And I do really believe that Star Force 3, which if you don't know how Star Force 3 ends, you'll see when I eventually do my playthrough of it if you watch it. But uh, Star Force 3 had a, a great ending to the franchise, honestly. Like, I'm not upset that it ended at 3, but I would love another one because I just love the Star Force games. So, like, I, I would be down if they brought it back and made a fourth, or if they brought back Battle Network and then made a seventh Battle Network game. Like, I, I will absolutely give Capcom my money for it. Dude, Cygnus refuses to spawn. He saw how easy I had it with, uh, Libra and Harp Note, and he was like, no, I will never fight you. You will never get to my SP chip. I was really hoping right after I mocked his voice he would show up. That would have been poetic timing. What does this card even do? I need to use it now to figure out what it does in case I need to use it in a boss fight later. It's screen dimming. Okay. Uh, it puts a thing here. Is, is this going to hit it? No, it doesn't. Okay. Oh, it just shoots a fireball. Oh, it spawns a thing that just shoots fireballs down random rows. Or maybe the row I'm standing on. That's neat. I imagine if the enemy hits the crystal ball, it breaks and then the attack stops. Because that's normally how summoning chips like that work. I can probably break it myself, too. Come on. Give me Cygnus. I want to beat Cygnus and then move on to uh, probably Ophiuchus next. Definitely Ophiuchus next, because we want to try and get Ophiuchus SP chip for Gemini, because Gemini is weak to grass. So if we could get Ophiuchus, if we can get Ophiuchus SP chip, then that'll make getting Gemini's that much easier. Of the two protagonists, Lan and Geo, who do you like better? Geo. I just like Star Force more in general. I, I love Star Force and Battle Network a lot, but I like Star Force more overall. And that's not even like a nostalgia thing, because I played Battle Network before I played, uh... I played Battle Network 4, 6, and I think I also played Battle Network 5 before I played Star Force. But I do think I played Battle Network 3 after Star Force came out. I don't remember. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like, for me at least, I feel like Lan is basically the same character throughout all the games. And he's not really a bad character, but he's just like, I feel like he's just the same dude the whole way through. And more of the focus is put on Mega Man, like, himself, kind of. But with Geo, like, Geo starts out as kind of, like, a bit of a scumbag in the first game, and then he, like, gets better and, like, grows as a character, and then in 2 and 3, they, like, they, uh, he doesn't, like, really have more bouts of development, because he does, like, all of his development in Star Force 1, from what I remember. 
But then you get to see, like, how he turned out to be a better person and how he continues his life from there in Star Force 2 and 3. That's not to say that Lan is a bad character. I just like Geo more. I also really like, you know, Lan doesn't really get in on any of the action, usually. Not to say that Lan never does, like, anything action-wise in the Battle Network games, because he does do some stuff where he has to, like, do something in the real world to help Mega Man. But, like, you know, most everything is, like, focused on... When it comes to, like, action and everything, it's focused on Mega Man, the Navi. In, uh... In Star Force, like, all of it is, is Geo and Omega Sys together. I also love Omega Sys, and I love Omega Sys' relationship with Geo as well. And, uh, I love Mega Man and Lan's relationship, too, because, like, they have the whole brother thing going on and everything else. Theirs is also really good, but I don't know. I just, I like Omega Sys as a character more than I, I like Omega Sys more than Mega Man, Lan, and Geo. So the fact that Geo gets to have a relationship with one of my favorite characters in the franchise just makes me like him even more. Bobble Froggle and Lumina Paris, welcome to stream. How's it going, guys? Good to see you. What's up? You know what, chat? Because it's taken so long to find this anyway, I'm going to respond to Liam's message he sent me. Liam said, I'm watching you play Mass Effect on part 11. It pains me you don't try the pistol. It's so good in Mass Effect 1. I'm going to say... Don't worry, Liam. I found out that the sniper is the best weapon. So I just use it. And that will probably bring him more pain, and I will laugh. Bam, bam. I won that fight in zero seconds. Literally, that I, like, I appeared on the battlefield and the enemies died, is what that implies. Dude, we're actually gonna... Remember earlier when I said, like, there's no way we're gonna need 50 cloakers? At this rate, I'm gonna have to buy more cloakers on my way out. <laughs> Sickness refuses to spawn. Honestly, at this point, I might leave and go try and fight another SP enemy and then come back and see if Sickness is in the mood. I really thought that threatening to leave would have made Sickness spawn right there. Honestly, fighting Cygnus last wouldn't be the worst thing to do because I'm not going to use Cygnus' chip. So, like, I can go get the SP chip for Opiaka and Gemini, and then that'll make fighting Cygnus easier. I wish these cloakers lasted a bit longer. They run out so fast. I've really already been live for an hour. Dude, time flies when you're having fun. It really does. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Dropping in to say hi. Hopefully I have my name in the YouTube video. Nixlepad, your name is in the YouTube video. Congratulations. Thanks for dropping in. Hope you have a good day doing whatever it is you do. That is not where I wanted that to be. Okay. Yeah, the anime does do the thing where Mega Man and Lan have to merge together. I remember. It was, like, really late in the anime, though, and I think it was only for, like, one season. It was cool. Don't get me wrong. I liked it, but, like... It doesn't happen in the games, and I, I liked the Battle Network anime and the Star Force anime, like, absolutely. I enjoyed both of them because, like, why, you know, it was neat, and it wasn't, like, a horrible adaptation or anything. The only time you don't want an anime version of something you like is when they just do really bad at it, like Persona 5 The Animation. So, like, I appreciated them and that they were neat, but, I mean, like, when it comes to Star Force and Battle Network, all I really care about is the, uh... All I really care about is the games, at the end of the day. So I was looking at Liam's response to me. He was not as upset as I wanted. He said the sniper in every game is very good, and I'm like, yeah, of course it is. It's like the most fun. 